Hi, in this lecture we are going to learn how to use tokens with Blazor Client WebAssembly projects. The tokens help us hold the information about the current logged in user into that browser and use that information later when we need it. In Blazor, tokens are not currently supported yet, but we can use the tokens by JavaScript interrupt. And since I want to talk about the only c -sharp part about the project, I'm not exactly going to use the JavaScript interrupt. Instead, I'm going to use the Nougat package for help us to complete this mission. Let's start with creating a new Blazor application. Let's name this Blazor token. And we are going to, of course, create a Blazor WebAssembly app. Now the project is opened, so right click on the project, let's go to manage nuket packages and hit browse and we are going to search for blazer extensions storage. Here we are and I'm not going to install the preview version, uh, let's install the latest stable version, hit install. Now uh, extensions is installed close this nugget page and let's go to our startup page in here just under the configure services method we are going to say services dot at singleton local storage and of course it is going to add the library it is using which is blazor extension storage let's go to solution explorer under the pages, let's add a new razor component. Let's say new item and choose the razor component. And I'm going to say token test page. Okay, under here, um, let's give something and make you the user enter something that we are going to hold it under our local storage. But to do that, I want to create a um, model first. So let's do that. So let's add a new class, say user info. And let's fix this typo. Okay. And let's say we are going to hold the username and maybe user id and let's get rid of the one here let's go to token test page and let's create another class here and I'm going to name it the same thing because I want to make a partial class out of the token test page dot razor file. So let's say this, and it's cause it is going to give us an error because the it there's already a class name token test page, so we are going to mark this as a partial class. Now we continue on coding here. Let's create a variable here. And I think this user info then initializes immediately. I'm going to use this variable to hold the information about the user and save it on our token. Now let's go to our token test page and create an edit form and test the model as our user info object. And I'm going to handle the wallet submit so. I'm going to say, sorry about that, handle wallet submit. This edit form will provide us with the information that user is going to get, give us. Now we can go back and create our handle wallet submit method. So I'm going to say private wallet handle wallet submit 
Now we have the method, it should, it should stop giving us an error, which is nice. And let's create our inputs. Let's say input text. And I'm just going to pass on placeholder. Let's say user name. And another input which is, um, should give us a user ID. And let's bind this, shall we? Let's say bind value, which should be our user infos, username fields. And <coughs> almost same goes for the ID part, we say user info, not user ID. Uh, our user ID fields an integer, but we define an input text here, which is meant for strings actually. So we are going to change input text to input number. So it should be okay. Now let's inject our previously uh, created variable, actually not created, but still. Uh, we say inject our local storage with the name of local storage for convenience. Let's save this all and let's create a button here. Make give it. Let's give it a type of submit. And name this save as token. Okay. Now we can go back to our code page. And for testing purposes, we are just going to write wallet sub submit. Okay, now we can run the project. But um, I almost forgot one thing before we run project. We have to use the page, this page somewhere in the project. So we say slash token should be good enough. Now we can run the project. So let's run this. And we want to go to the our token page. Now we press F12 to open up the console. And let's just click save as token. As you can see, we have a here a valid submit message here. It means our button worked uh, as are expected. Now we can continue our project. Let's close this. We'll go back to our token test page code site. And now let's test some other thing. Let's give it, let's turn it into string interpolation string. And say username, user info. And let's give user ID equals info dot user ID. And let's fix this uh, with username. Now let's run this. Now we are going to enter some input in our web page and expect to see it in our console. It is opening, but we are going to go to our token page anyway. What's the types there? Open up our console with F12. Let's give it username as uh, Scribble. And in Let's go to four, save as token. As you can see here, our username is Scribble and the user ID is four. We successfully get our input into our code, uh, code side of the project. Now let's get rid of this and save this as token now. Now let's run the project. And of course, you want to go to the R token page here. Let's give it a username. Scribble is always nice and username. And open up our console. Actually, not console, but under the application page, if you go to the local storage and HTTP localhost here, as you can see, I already saved a token here, but we do not want it. I just deleted it. 
Now, if we say save as token here, as you can see, another one appeared here with a user ID of five and username of Scribo. And you can see more uh, prettier here. And if I change this as eight, it should also change with eight. As you can see here, we successfully uh, created and saved a token. We use the local storage, so it is going to be saved for a long time, even if the browser is closed. Uh, now, if you want to test it, you can just close this and rerun the project. Press F12 to open up our developer console, and as you can see, our token is still there. Um, local storage is help us storing information even if the browser is closed but if you want to lose all the information and you know get rid of the information after the browser is closed you can always use ses session storage which is uh, holds the information as long as the browser i mean the tab is open so when you close the tab the ses session storage information is gone as well now let's close this um, let's create uh, another button or another form here maybe let's let's create a button here and it is going to be for let's say get the token from the uh, local storage so say get token and let's give it an on click say get token right now we don't have this method and we go into our code page and we are going to create it say get token now we can we'll say our token object equals local storage that get item and we are uh, want to get a user info object and it expects us the key which if you remember it it is token oh, we can say and um, let's say user name which should be Check that. Ah, I forget to mention it. Actual local storage get item is actually asynchronous. So uh, let's turn this an asynchronous method. I'll say async task get token. And now we can say await here. Now say token object dot username. And we can say user ID user ID nice now we can test this now let's compile this and run um, let's go to our token oops let's go to token page and open up our developer console and as you, as you can see we still have our token variable here so we don't have to save token here if we can simply go to console and say get token as you can see it is here now we can uh, get the token but I'll one final thing I like to show you how to show it on the screen and let's do that now we start the project and open up our token test page and let's create a p and i'm going and let's see what we can do okay let's do this private user info or maybe string should be suffice user name it should be like this and after we get our token let's make the username equal to token object dot username and okay let's go back to our razor page 
and say if string is null or white space username so if our username is not null or it is not and it is not white space uh, we want to print that out you can say username equals to right, username okay you might expect to this work but it should not because our method is asynchronous which is which means blazer can't exactly follow the state changes in asynchronous method so we have to specify the state has changed manually here so we say state has changed method we call the method here so blazer will know the state has changed and it should re-render uh, the razor page so we, now we can run this and we wait okay it is working let's get our token page open up our developer console an application page as you can see we still have the token here if you click get token as you can see username equals scribble and if you change this to sales token as you can see it changes here too and we click to get token again and voila username equals scribo 2 okay now i showed you how to save and use tokens